Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. I'm Kenny Callagher, along with Jerry Burrow. We're on the air for the next half hour. We're going to talk Minnesota hockey from the pros to high school and everything in between. And let's start with the pros, because as we all know, the Minnesota Wilds really started to struggle and went on a 1-13, uh, a and 13, I believe it was, a losing streak. And they fired the coach. Mike Yo was let go. Uh, General Manager Tr Chuck Fletcher made the announcement that uh, John Torchetti would be the interim coach. And lo and behold, his first game in Vancouver, Monday night, and they get a huge victory 5-2. Right. to two. And Coach Torchetti was watching this program and listening to particularly what I said, get across the blue line and shoot the puck. And they shot the puck. <laughs> and it's, they score. <laughs> and it was a great win for uh, the Wild. And this, Jerry, is what this team is capable of doing. And, oh, uh, yeah. You know, for some reason, Mike Yo wasn't, uh, they weren't responding to Mike Yo. Mike Yo was a good coach, like Chuck Fletcher said in his uh, press conference. We let a good man go. He had a good record with this team, got us to really? three consecutive playoff rounds. But when you get on into a losing streak that he was in, something needs to change, and it's always the coach. Right, and it's sad that way, because I think some of the players, they're the ones that, I think I would have sent some down to Iowa, <laughs> to their farm team, you know. Well, who in particular are you thinking of? Oh, I'm thinking almost all the top guys on the payroll. Yeah. They're just, they weren't playing good at all. Yeah. I mean, you can take, uh, I mean, anyone over $3 million, I think the only guy that was playing good at this time was Coyle. Outside of that, I mean, I didn't see anyone that was playing any effort into their game. You know, even last night, I saw Thomas Vanek chugging from uh, the offensive zone to get back and back check, and uh, I don't know if maybe he's just not able yeah. to play up to his level or if, if that's something else. Now he has another year left in his contract, so yeah. I don't know. They might, I mean, they're thinking, look at Pumpenville. I mean, look at all these players, though. I got, there's five players here. Niederreier, one, one goal in the last night. This is not counting last night now. One goal in 19 games. Uh, Koivu, one in 20. One goal in 20 games, last 20. Parisi, he scored last night, I know, but one in 13. That's, these are goal scorers. Mick, your favorite fan, uh, Granlin, <laughs> one in 16. Uh, Pominville. He's paid just to score goals because he's not going to be a defensive guy. One in 22. Thomas Vanek, one in 11. These are goal scorers. Not, they don't do much defense. Well, things did seem to uh, change Monday night. Uh, again, the wild move forward with interim head coach Don, John Torchetti after Mike Yo was fired following Saturday's loss to Boston at home. Uh, the Wild had lost eight games in a row, 13 of their past 14, and Torchetti had previous, previously served as head coach of the AHL's Iowa Wild. He also was an interim coach for Florida and Los Angeles and won those opening games as well. So really? he's 3-0 and <laughs> as an interim coach to start. That's pretty good. He should just quit right now. <laughs> but he, he, he was coaching... Um, down at Iowa, so he knew a lot of the players that are up here right. that he's worked with, so that helps. And that that team down in Iowa is really kind of pathetic. They were in uh, the lowest of, I mean, of all the teams in the American Hockey League. Now, I mean, they had a, they've been playing pretty good hockey recently with him coaching. Well, let's think forward. Uh, does he just hold on to this interim tag at the end of the season? Is he uh, out the door? Or? I think if they make the playoffs, they'll consider him as the head coach. They would have to. Yes. And why not? He's never but been a head coach. But they have to make the playoffs. He's never been a head coach. Really? Just uh, In the NHL. Right. Correct? I'm pretty sure of that, yes. Now, he was an assistant coach over at the in the KHL on a Russian team. Right. He's been around. Yeah. He's, uh, I think he's from Boston area. 
He Who is. is uh, we got it right here. John Torchetti, born July 9th, 1964. Uh, yeah, born in Boston, Massachusetts. You can kind of hear that Boston accent uh, when he speaks. But uh, he really lit a torch underneath the team. I believe that they played for the coach last night. Well, we'll see you the rest of the week in Canada. they got two more games up in Canada. And then they come back for the stadium series game with Chicago Blackhawks. So, hey, I hope you get this team together. I mean, every all the fans want this team. Well, let's talk about the stadium series. You know, Mike Yo again, let go as head coach of the Wild. And you got to kind of feel for him because these outdoor games – especially are big for the fans or big for the players and the coaches. They look forward to these games, and now he's not going to be there for that, so you kind of have to feel for him. Um, but this outdoor game Saturday will be an alumni game, North Stars versus Blackhawks. That's going to be televised on Fox. Okay. And I believe that's a 4 o'clock start. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, Sunday game, the outdoor game with Chicago, 2.30 drop of the puck on NBC? I think it is, yeah, yeah. 2.30. Yeah, so I mean, I think they they sold out the tickets, so it's going to be a big crowd there. I don't know what the weather. It's going to be pretty warm, I heard. Well, they but, have a refrigerated right. ice sheet there, but so still, that sun, you know. True, they can deal with some warmer temps. Right. Unlike uh, yeah. here at Bayfront, a couple right. of weeks ago, we had uh, you know some ice issues, but overall. Uh, yeah, I like what the Wild have done here. I think Chuck Fletcher made a good move, and. Uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, the Wild yeah. started a three-game home trip with a win at Vancouver on Monday night, and then they'll play games at Calgary on Wednesday and Edmonton on Thursday, and then they come home for the stadium series in right. Chicago. Right. And uh, it's kind of funny, you stop talking about the alumni game at 4 o'clock on Saturday. Um, Gordy Roberts, the coach of uh, Elk River High School, he's going to be in that game. Oh, awesome. That's yeah. great. Uh, and they changed the time of the playoff game. If they win uh, tonight and East wins, they're going to switch the game to noon. They're going to be playing at Elk noon, River. yes, instead of two, the second game, because so he can play in that game. Oh, well, that's great. They talked about it. That's so awesome. all the coaches in the Section 7 yeah. agreed to change it just for him. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, yeah. Right. Uh, over the weekend, uh, the UMD Bulldogs, uh, they played a Tuesday game against Bemidji. That was a makeup game right. for uh, October when there was a power outage at Amsoil and a 2-1 to -one loss to Bemidji State. My goodness. Uh, they well, lost both games to Bemidji then. Yeah, because that yeah. Friday night game they, they lost and then the Saturday was a makeup. Yeah. Or was it vice versa? I don't recall. But nonetheless, right. they lost both those games. What in the world is going on with this UMD Bulldog team? I don't know, but I tell you what, I don't like their their schedule. It's tough right now. They got to go to North Dakota this weekend, and I tell you what, they don't win both games out there. They're not going to make the NCAA unless they win the tournament. So that means they might have to go on the road for the playoffs. Then they have to get down to the Target Center for the Frozen playoffs. And then they got to win that to get to the regions. Well, if Justin Fontaine was still on the roster, I'd like their chances in North Dakota <laughs> better. Didn't he score a goal last night? I think he did. He did. Yeah, he did. I think he just and then promised. didn't he have a game-winning goal up there in a game oh, a couple, two, three years ago? I don't recall what the uh, significance of that was, but uh, they don't do well at North Dakota. No. Now, that's a tough uh, place to play yeah. for any team. I mean, it is. go in there. It is. They Still have not been up to that arena. Really? Yeah. You got to go I once. I don't have any uh, future plans, but uh, we'll see. Now, what about the stadium series? Will you be down at those games? No, I won't. It's the first time I've been denied a hockey press pass Whoa, in 25 time years. time they denied you? They denied a whole bunch of us. <laughs> really? Yes. Did they give you a reason why? It's or? not the Wild. It's the National Hockey League. All right. That runs the whole thing. Yeah. So, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> I guess there's so many extra people coming in there for that, you know, ex-players, this and that. Yeah. And passes and that. They couldn't and find a spot in TCF Bank Stadium for Jerry for, Burrow. For little Jerry Burrow. Come on. <laughs> really? Well, I think we should protest. Well, then I'm going to take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> what are your plans for the weekend then? Uh, well, playoff hockey. Yeah. On... Uh, 
On Saturday is the biggest day in high school hockey to me on Section 7AA and 7A. So they have all the four games of the semis. So it'll be two games of, uh, and if the high seeds win, it'll, it'll be Elk River and Duluth East at noon, and then Grand Rapids and Cloquet at two. And then at night, it'll be, uh, I got it right here. It'll be the semis. It'll be Hermantown and um, Greenway at um, 6 o'clock, and then at 8 o'clock will be Hibbing Denfield if the high seeds win. There's no upsets. Whoa, well, let's not assume that. So what's the first game? I falls in Epileth, and then Greenway plays North Shore, and we'll assume they'll beat North Shore. Hermantown gets to play the winner of this game. Right. So, okay, I see. Yeah, I suppose. A proc yeah, yeah, I think that that's safe uh, to say. Denfeld and Virginia can yeah, go that's either way. Exactly. I mean, they're pretty close. I think it's safe to say, then, that uh, Hermantown and Greenway uh, will play each other. Right. And that'll happen on February 20th. Saturday at, at uh, 6 o'clock at night. Saturday at Amsoil. Okay, 6 o'clock. And, then, and then this winner of this Hibbing... Uh, uh, let's say Denfeld gets the, regardless, Denfeld, Virginia, the winner of that game will play more than likely Hibbing. Right. Uh, that also is the 20th at 8 o'clock at Amsoil. Right. Okay. Uh, right after the first game. They always said 6 yeah. and 8 and it never happens on time. Well, Denfeld ended their season 11-13-1. and one. They uh, lost their final two games. Uh, you know, 4-2 to two loss at Grand Rapids. I don't know if you call that a respectable loss. I was at the game. I'll tell you what. We had River Alander on our show a couple yeah. of weeks ago. Yeah. And he was the whole show that game. Really? I mean, he made so many saves, unbelievable saves. Yeah. And um, hey, congratulations to him again yeah. for being a finalist for the Frank Brinzik yeah. Award yeah. for the top senior goalie in the state. So there's only two goalies that are up for this award, and he's one of them. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. River Alander, a standout at Duluth Denfeld. Uh, Duluth East uh, lost their final game of the season at Minnetonka, 6-1. to one. Uh, Minnetonka, is that good? The boys took the night uh, off. Minnetonka's a very good team, they? and they can go yeah. all the way. You know, these yeah. are, you know, you go back to that uh, Hockey Day Minnesota that Minnetonka uh, hosted uh, they games were actually moved inside. They beat East pretty handedly. Was it nine to three or something? Yeah, something like that. that. Yeah, yeah. E East ends the regular season sixteen and nine, so still uh, not a losing season in the history of that uh, high school uh, team out there. And now East will play their first round tonight at and I mean Andover at the Heritage Center. Okay, tonight we're taping Tuesday. And the winner of that game will advance to... To play the winner of the Elk River and Forest Lake game on Saturday at noon. Okay. And then who are the other teams in that bracket? And then um, Grand Rapids is playing Cambridge, Isanti, tonight. And they'll play the winner of, I think is the big game tonight in the area, is Cloquet against uh, Duluth Marshall. And that's in Cloquet? Yes. So Duluth Marshall has to be on their game uh, if they want right. to come out of that with a and W. The funny thing about it, Cloquet beat Marshall twice this year, so people always say that third time, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, if the stars align, Duluth East and Duluth Marshall could play again. They could. But they'd have to be in the finals. Well, we'll see what happens there. <laughs> And uh, best luck to all the teams. Uh, you know, everyone's uh, not everyone can go home a winner. Uh, Duluth Marshall, a uh, nine fourteen and two on the season. And uh, I don't know, what do you think their chances are of advancing? Marshall? Yeah. I think Cloquet has got their number in that, but uh, hey, if their goal, Marshall's goalie can um, play a good game, I think Marshall has a chance because Cloquet sometimes struggles getting goals. You know, if they get ahead, then they can start their trapping and that and really slow the other team down. I don't think Superior will be going to state this year. Superior coming off a championship season, 3-19-1. Yeah, they lost a lot of players. Did they? Yes. The, the, yeah. Some went to Marshall. There's one at East. And there's one in, I mean, the whole bunch of players that left. Uh, Hermantown, 22-3, another solid season for Bruce Plant's uh, squad. Uh, the Hawks, uh, 
predictions, outlook for how far they might advance? I say it's an upset if they don't win state. Yeah. All the way. I now, think there's only a couple teams that I think that really have a chance to beat them because they Breck. have... Breck and St. Saint Cloud Apollo, which has a the other goalie that's yeah. up for the Frank Brinsick. So he's playing real good, and if he gets hot, he can stop um, Hermantown. Boy, I'll be torn if Hermantown meets Laverne in the championship. Ooh. Now you're going with, uh, <laughs> what's his name, Jackson Nelson, Jason of Jackson. course, uh, I would be pulling for uh, Hermantown in there. Uh, the Laverne's done real well, but uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, we're just going to kind of cover the gamut here. Uh, the Minnesota Wilderness, based out of Cloquet, are on the road this weekend. Uh, they'll play the Cooley Region Chill. The Wilderness are currently 28 13 and 3 and are in second place in the Midwest right. Division. And remember, they were last year's Robertson Cup champs. And we talked a lot about that, the way that they uh, won that championship. And it was a great championship. Uh, the NAHL Robertson Cup defending champion, Minnesota Wilderness, based in Cloquet. Next home game, February 26th, versus the Cooley Region Chill. And that will be a community night at the rink, sponsored by USG. All tickets uh, are discounted at the gate, and the first 200 fans will receive a USG bracelet. Oh, oh, huh. yeah. Wonder if, I wonder if it's made of gypsum. <laughs> hey, Minnesota Wilderness just beat uh, this last weekend uh, Cooley Region six four, and then they played the Magicians down in in uh, Twin Cities there, Richfield, four to one. So hey, they're playing pretty good hockey. And I know they had some injuries and that, so they're playing pretty good with what they have. And again, the UMD Bulldog men, uh, after that makeup game lost to Bemidji State, had the weekend off. They'll resume play at North Dakota Friday and Saturday this week. The men, uh, Bulldog men, overall 11, 12, and 5, and in NCHA play 7, 8, and 3. The St. Scholastica Saints, Jerry, they yeah. had a surprise. Well, they lost to St. Norbert 3 to 2 on Friday right. night. And they tied. And St. Norbert outshot them 47 to 26. Uh, Scholastica's goaltender Tyler uh, Bruggeman uh, held the team in there. Close game to the number one Division Three team right. in the nation, St. Norbert, three to two on Friday, and then Saturday a two to two tie. Right. Uh, St. Scholastica scored first in that game, and then hung on to uh, tie St. Norbert. So what does that do to St. Scholastica now in the? Uh, I think it's going to give them confidence uh, going on the rest of the season that they can play. That good with the top team in the nation in D3, I think uh, they're, it's all, I mean, these kids can do it. Scholastica overall 14 6 and 3, and then in conference play NCHA 12 5 and 1, and they will play, they're going to host Adrian uh, this Friday at 7 o'clock, and then Saturday uh, Scholastica will play at 5 at Mars Lake View Arena. And uh, the boys up there are playing well for Mark, uh, Mark Wick. Yeah, good for them. I see the Minnesota Gophers uh, beat um, Ohio State twice, but close games out there in Columbus, Ohio. They beat them 5-4 in overtime, and then the next night they beat them 4-3. So, but uh, the Gophers are another team that has to fight to make uh, the regions. And the way it's looking right now, they might have to win the Big Ten tournament to get to the regions. How, Jerry, 16 and 13 overall, the Gophers. However, in Big Ten play, 11 and 3? My goodness. Yeah, that Big Ten, a lot of people say it's not that good of a league. A lot of bad teams well, there. Wisconsin, got, uh, Michigan State are terrible. I mean, Michigan and Penn State are doing good. And Ohio State's not a bad team. But they just can't squeak these uh, close games out. Wisconsin, uh, 6, 13, and 7 in uh, overall play. Big Ten play, Wisconsin, 1, 8, and 3. Uh, they had a, a loss and a tie against Michigan. They'll play Michigan State, uh, host Michigan State, this Friday and Saturday. But, uh, you know, we can... Uh, the, the Big Ten, that, that's a head-scratcher. It right. just is. All right. And nothing's going to change there. That's the way it's going to be. And yeah, 
So we'll see. I mean, Michigan comes in at toward on a couple of weeks, and the Gophers, if they don't beat them, then they're they're in trouble. Now there's a chance, or at least there's talk about adding other teams to the Big Ten as well. Right. But the, all the leagues might be going after these, like Arizona State right now, go right. after that team, and then they follow suit with uh, some other teams. Now you've that will got start Rutgers their and Maryland, and but there'll be a lot of teams that will be starting hockey in the next uh, five years, I think. Yeah. I think there'll you'll be four or five more teams coming in, hockey programs. All they need is that big donator that build the stadium. What about Purdue? I don't see Purdue, but uh, there's teams like uh, Nebraska, uh, Illinois that have club teams, and out on the West Coast there's some teams, yeah. and even Vegas wants to start a team. Well, you know, and I heard about that. I don't know that that'll ever happen just because of that gambling, gambling yeah. aspect. That yeah, but they always had the basketball there. You know, Jerry Tartanian. Well, yeah, but that's college. But professional. Uh, well, I'm talking about college. The oh, college okay. team started a yeah, hockey yeah. program. Ah, yeah. we're in Vegas. Yes. Ah, because they're building. The, they're going to build a new stadium. It looks like no matter what. Well, stay so, tuned for that. Yeah. Uh, again, the big uh, the big talk. Uh, Minnesota Wild uh, made a coaching change. John Torchetti replaces Mike Yo, and they respond with a win Monday night at Vancouver. And the big outdoor series this weekend against the Chicago Blackhawks is going to be awesome. The alumni game. Uh, we're going to reunite uh, Al Secord and. Uh, Yep. Dino Cicerelli and all those uh, characters from the past. Yep. And again, Fox Sports North is going to carry the alumni game, and then NBC will carry that regular game on Sunday yep. and uh, go wild. Yep. Well, let's get back to uh, high school. I'll give them my final rankings of the regular season. So, If I had a drum, I'd give you a drum roll. Do, 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 do. Let's start with Class AA. Okay. Benil, number one. They haven't lost a game all year. 24, 0, and 1. They lost a key player, and I don't know if he's going to be back a forward, uh, Kade uh, Glico. And now, this is interesting. Just happened a week ago. Because last year, Lakeville North was in this position undefeated, and they eventually went all the way yeah. and won the championships, and now Benilde is undefeated. Yeah. And then Blaine, number two, 21 4, with the best player in the state, Riley Tufty, that's coming to UMD. And I'm going to make a prediction right now. Either Benil or Blaine will not be at state. Will not or, be at state. One of those two teams will get the upset. Two teams that you have ranked number one and two. Right. Benil being undefeated. Okay. That's yeah. my prediction. I All right. Have, I got to put that upset in there. All right, Chair. Okay, number three, Lakeville North, 19 5 and 1. Stillwater, number four, with only one loss, 23 1 and 1. They just have. Um, Hill Murray will be their biggest competition in their section. Bermidji, very nice team. 21 2 and 2 is number 5. Their problem might be, if they have any problems, would be that they're scheduled. They don't come down to the cities and play the big city teams. Number 6, Holy Family Catholic. This is a team to watch. I mean, this team can go all the way. Holy Family Catholic, 19 5. Minnetonka is playing some of the best hockey of all the high schools right now. They just beat Duluth East Saturday last Saturday Even with six night. losses. Yep. All right. But they their schedule is so tough, they're going to get losses. I said in the beginning of the year, a lot of these teams just getting through with five losses is a good yeah. season for them. Number eight, a much improved Grand Rapids team. And they're the number one seed in 7AA. They're 18-6-1. Eden Prairie, 16-7-2. Number nine, they're having some goaltending problems. Number 10, Elk River, 17-7-1. And, and then teams to watch, Centennial, Duluth East, Edina, Farmington, Hill Murray, Lakeville South, Moorhead, Prior Lake, St. Thomas Academy, Wazetta. Let me ask you, what's up with this Edina team? Uh, they're not in the top. Young. Yeah. Young. Their best players are 10th graders. But they got, oh, uh, you know, well, they got a great coaching staff. Sure. And, they might be one of the teams that beat the nail. <laughs> mm, interesting. They're in the same section. Well, it sounds like they're going to be something to contend with next year and the year after. Yeah, if they stay. Yeah. You never know kids nowadays. They're, True. They're solicited to uh, leave and go to juniors or Ann Arbor. 
Class A, cream of the crop. Yep, Hermantown, Hermantown 21 2 and 1. Great regular season. And I see them going all the way. The only two teams I really see that really give them a problem is Breck, number two, at 21 3 and 1. Very good team. And St. Cloud Apollo, 23 and 2. And then Montamina, number four. Number five, St. Paul Academy. Number six, St. Cloud Cathedral. St. Cloud Cathedral is playing a lot better hockey right now. Hibbing, number seven, 22 and three. Delano, number eight, 18 and seven record. Thief River Falls, number nine, 19 and six record. Number 10, Greenway, which 21 and four. Very good season for first year um, coach Grant Clayton. And then teams to watch, Blake, East Grand Forks, Little Falls, your Laverne, Northfield, Orono, Princeton, and Sartell St. Stephen. Did Orono just beat somebody last week, week before, that was a, kind of a surprise that I see? Yeah, they did beat a team. And uh, Mark Parrish, uh, ex-pro, Bloomington Jefferson, St. Cloud State, yeah. and he played for the Wild. Coaches Orono? Yeah. Oh, my. So, okay. They're, they're a decent team, but... Uh, so what are you saying? Did he slip on a jersey or something? Or? <laughs> <laughs> he scores. He gets oh, in front of the net. Yes. Remember yeah. him? He's always in front of the net. All his goals are within three feet of the goalie. You know, remember Mark Parrish? He signed a big uh, contract with the Wild. Yeah. And they didn't live up to their end of the bargain. They cut him two years after the deal. It was like a... They had three years left. I thought it was a five-year deal. Yeah, he yeah. had three years. They, yeah. they were paying on him. Uh, he was just enjoying life. Well, hey, hockey uh, contracts are guaranteed, so you got yeah. the money. There you go. So the playoffs start uh, this week, and I tell you what, it's going to be, this is my most exciting part of the season for me, oh, watching for sure. section for sure. playoffs. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I just love it when there's always going to be upsets, and nothing shocks me anymore. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's why I'm putting out there that one and two on the Double A side, one of those two teams is yeah. going down. <laughs> well, Hockey Day America is this Sunday. The Wild will participate in an outdoor game with the Chicago Blackhawks. Of course, every day in Duluth is Outdoor Hockey Day. Uh, Hockey Day America could be every day. It could be Hockey Day Minnesota every day. Yeah, it's been great. The outside, yeah. outdoor game at uh, in Duluth here, and they're still talking about that. What a great day that was. And well, that's great. Uh, you know, hopefully we can get uh, somebody here as we get towards the end of our season here and get a wrap up with that. I'd like to talk to Wes Walls. I see you got Ms. Hockey finalists. Anybody of local interest or? There's no local, but uh, there's some people that are in um, the state tournament. Um, you know, Mackenzie Stephan, Katie Robinson, and we got a UMD recruit, uh, Sydney Broat. The Broats are a big hockey family in the Twin Cities, played at Roseville. They're, they're, they're aunts. So Chelsea, they all played for the Gophers. So you got a good player coming up here to UMD. So that's um, that's good. Well, I know Denfelt, uh, one of their uh, youth leagues, won a championship here. Uh, District Eleven, perhaps. Uh, my nephew plays on that team. I don't. It's have... a Pee Wee team. Isn't yeah. It? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they had a nice win, I believe, up at Silver Bay. Okay. I can't think of the team they won, but. Uh, the state of hockey is doing well in Minnesota, particularly in Duluth. And uh, with that, we're done. Uh, Minnesota Hockey Connection, you can find us online, minnesotahockeyconnection.com. And on Facebook, go to our Facebook page, like us there. And uh, we want to thank the staff at PAC TV. This program is produced uh, by PAC Television. And get out there and watch a section, boys section hockey game. There's going to be a lot of games around your, our area and in the cities and all over the state. Awesome. We'll be back here next week to drop the puck. We'll see you then.